Well, Andy Parsons, welcome to Sports 5 TV. Just over your left shoulder, yes. it says, and you're lying there in a provocative way. Yes. Um, at least I if, find if it. If I so. only knew what was over my left shoulder. Provocative or evocative. And um, you've got a DVD out. It's called Gruntled. Yes. Why? What, why have I got a DVD Why have you got a DVD out, for goodness sake? More to the, the point. The DVD <laughs> company said, said that they would make a DVD. Oh. So they told you to jump off a cliff, you would? Well, I think if they filmed it and said that it would go, go out on loads of really good websites and we got to have a chat, there must be a chance. We'd have to do it before you jumped off the cliff, wouldn't we? Well, Why? I could see you at the bottom, yeah, you know. I so. yeah, but yeah. You'd be interested in what questions you'd ask me. It would be, yeah. And, and whether you were really keen on getting the actual, you know, the interview done or whether you thought maybe the emergency services was a better idea. It would be. No, the interview would always be better. Um, <laughs> Why gruntled? That really is what I meant by that question. And you know it. Why gruntled? Why is it called Gruntled? Mm. It was called Gruntled, well, partly because I had to come up with a title before I'd written the show, and Gruntled is a great word because it, everybody thinks it means different things, so it sort of can mean anything. Um, but the real idea for Gruntled was that David Cameron had asked to come up with a happiness index for the Office of National Statistics. He wanted them to get back to him <laughs> to say exactly how happy Britain was. And I thought that this was a curious idea, mm. given that we were in an economic downturn <laughs> and that uh, lots of people were being made redundant. So I thought I would jump the gun and say how I, happy I thought Britain was. Yeah, yeah. And, it's uh, the opposite of disgruntled. It, it is, in some ways. Apparently, actually, what it means is uh, a little bit disgruntled. So gruntled is, is like, being disgruntled is being very gruntled. Oh. It's actually what it means, which is why it's gone out of the language, because in fact, nobody would, you're either, disgruntled is quite a minor thing anyway. You know, you're usually yeah. extremely disgruntled. It's not livid, is it, or wild? No, it's that's it, which is much more fun. Yeah. You know, just being sort of slightly gruntled is hardly anything. So gruntled was a word? It was a word, still is a word. Was it really? Yeah, and, but now it's, through popular use, it's being used as the opposite of disgruntled, which is why it's a catch-all phrase for a nice comedy title. So you do realise that in 50 years' time, when, when we're, we're all gone, yeah. Uh, Andy Parsons may... Is this because we've jumped off a cliff trying to do a DVD? Well, no, you would have gone then. I, I, if you land on me, I would also would have gone. But uh, assume that we've both gone and we've, yeah. but we've both died happy and peacefully in our sleep. Um, yeah. Again, not necessarily together. No. Um, people may look back on you and think about your comedy career. Yes. But they will look back on you and say that you reintroduced a long-lost and much-loved word. Well, that's it. I think there'll be certain people who, who feel that they've also contributed to uh, the, the whole thing with Gruntle. But yes, what a, what a wonderful thing to, to actually have a little thing in the dictionary. <laughs> yes, that was what you did. Now, I listen, think, you I think it's unlikely. Uh, well, well, let's start it now. Yes. I'm, I'm, yeah, well, I'm, you know, we have. We have started well, it. Let's start it now. Yeah, but we've be... also started the whole idea that maybe it's a good idea to film me jumping off a cliff. So maybe some things we need to put the brakes on. And if you do that, you won't be Gruntled at the end, will you? Well, who knows? Crumpled. Or discrumpled. Well, or if there's a trampoline at the bottom, it could, you know, could be a wonderful DVD. Yeah, you could, yeah, you could bounce back. Anyway, let's move on. Um, so, apart from the DVD, you've got a tour coming up as well. Now, now tell us about the, the stand-up because uh, um, I have dabbled in it, and uh, let's say that I, I didn't die. I was killed horrendously and painfully and, and slowly. Is this therapy for you? Is there a chance? Yeah, I, yeah. I want to get this out and talk yeah. to you about it. Yeah. So I wasn't in the audience. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> Nobody was in the audience. That's part of the that's part of the problem. Tell us about that because you know everybody seems. Oh, I wouldn't mind being Andy and being on Mock the Week. It must be great. And oh, yeah. I didn't really know much about him. He's an overnight. So yeah, what sort of like a 15, 20 year overnight success? Tell us about stand up and obviously it's it's. I guess to everybody, you you all go back to it, don't you? Eventually. Yeah. Well, I I you know I thought I'd talk about it in the show a little bit how we're starting out to audiences of of not very many and. You know, various uh, indifferent reviews and what have you, and uh, you know, you, it, that's the way it is. Uh, you 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 put in, you get better, and uh, maybe some people give up because they just haven't quite done enough of the hard yards, and they'd much rather be an interviewer for Sports Vibe. No, <laughs> <laughs> probably not. But you, you do need to do the hard yards, don't you? Most, and and you've all had your nights, haven't you? Where you've probably asked, "Why am I doing this? I've I've been paid very little for being abused at for the last." Oh, again, this is just me. <laughs> No, what I mean, usually the heckling is very good natured. If you know the, uh, you know, people have paid to come and see you, so it, they they don't really want you uh, bottled off. The mm. uh, but they also like you to to be able to respond if if people in the crowd talk to you. And so you know that's uh, that's obviously part of it. But uh, it's also usually the people who are shouting out have had far more alcohol than you have. So if you can't do a bit of banter with them, then it's sadly disappointing. Exactly. I mean, once you know what you're doing, that the hecklers actually manna from heaven most of the time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, an unknown fact about Andy, Andy Parsons is that you are a law graduate. 
it, it's not that unknown. I think it is actually quite well known. I believe in various, uh, various. It is on Wikipedia and things like that. Oh so. yeah, but. Well, I, I assume Wikipedia. therefore you weren't when I read that well, on that's Wikipedia. It. I was uh, for ages on Wikipedia. I did have grade 8 piano and uh, a massive phobia of snakes. Is that right? Yeah, well, that, that's not right, but it was right that it was on Wikipedia. Yeah, is so that I, right that it was on Wikipedia? Yeah, I actually turned up to a TV show and they'd got me a piano to see if I wouldn't have a little tinker for them. And they, right? they were very disappointed to find out their research had been very nice. And that explains why I asked for this interview to be done in the Reptile House in London Zoo. That's it, right? that's it. And oh. if it's crawling over my left hand shoulder or whatever, then I'll, I'll be very. Ah. But the truth of all this nonsense is that you are a Lord, Lord graduate. Indeed. You went, you went to Cambridge. So yeah. the obvious question is, why aren't you now down in a, down in chambers with a with a you know, lawyer's barrister's well, wig on your I head? I never and... wanted to do law. I did science A levels. I hated them. So they wouldn't let me do English at university. So law was a, some sort of compromise. Hated law. So I managed to uh, at various lunch times when I sort of came down for the only six months I thankfully worked in the, in the law profession, I managed to start writing for BBC Radio mm. and uh, I haven't looked back since, so no, no interest in the law whatsoever. Fantastic. When you were at Cambridge studying law, was there already the sort of the, the comedian there? The, the, was there somewhere a desire to do what you're doing now? The, the, big, the biggest passion was to make sure I didn't have to do law when I came out <laughs> of university. So I was doing loads of things, but mostly playing sport, really. That's right. what I was actually doing. Just wasting three years as an undergraduate, which was great fun. Fantastic. Now, you seamlessly moved into the area of sport. Well, there was well, something to... about it being sports vibe. I thought that no, might be important. You're, you're a clever chap, aren't you? <laughs> so you're playing sport. Any good? What sports? What are your passions? A absolutely rubbish at virtually everything, but loved it all. So I was part of very disappointing teams for hockey, cricket, football, rugby, uh, pool, um, even a little bit of croquet, I think I dabbled at as well. Really? So and are you being modest, or seriously, were you useless at all? Of them? Absolutely useless at all of them. I also talk about in the show about how I managed to get a rugby ball wedged up inside my rib cage, which <laughs> you can imagine wasn't, wasn't the best ploy for if you wanted to be any good at rugby. No, that's rather like a sort of a deer with a target on on its back. Um, and uh, you're also a Torquay United fan. I don't know what the relevance that is to sport, it's but anyway. The, well, that's, feel free, feel free to have a go before you ask the question. <laughs> but no, I grew up. I grew up in Devon and Cornwall, so uh, Torquay was the, uh, the natural choice. But uh, the, uh, I don't get down there very often. My dad's still down there, so I occasionally get down for a, for a very disappointing pasty and a cup of tea. <laughs> Do you does the old accent return when you get down there? It's very hard to dust the side well, the, at the uh, moment. Uh, by all accounts, the um, I, again something I talk about on the DVD, but the um, the uh, OU sound uh, apparently, according to Alistair McGowan, house and trousers. It's very West Country, and uh, so whenever he, he by all accounts, does an impression of me, not that I've ever heard it, he never does it to my face. Um, but so he, he, he basically wedges West Country into London, and when the two mix, that's pretty much what he gets with me. That's you, eh? Hey? Yeah. Now, what about Mock the Week? Uh, fabulously successful. Uh, you're, were you in pretty much from the start? Well, no, I was, I was sort of, I was a regular from Series 3. They, they gave me the odd appearance in Series 1 and 2, and then uh, Rory Bremner decided he'd had enough and then there, there was a space for one more. So I sort of, uh, I came in there. Great fun, and it strikes me as um, quite competitive. I mean, it, you've really got to be on your edge of your seat to sort of get through it's the, that. It's the only panel show where they don't ask you individual questions, so it's like a little comedy topic is chucked up, and it's the only panel show which has seven comics on it. There's usually a few, you know, minor celebrities who, you know, you can actually take the rise out of or whatever. There's, you know, you've got seven comics and they all go, <sighs> And uh, it's a bun fight. It's a bun fight recorded for three hours. Best of luck with the DVD. Thank you very much. Best of luck with the tour. And uh, lovely to meet you. Cheers.